Hello, my name is Brooke Muzzy and this is Scouting on Air. Scouting on Air is the first official television program about the scouting movement today. Our show is hosted by the Youth of Scouting's Pontiac Manitou District in Oakland County, Michigan. We'll have coverage of local service projects, gear reviews, camping, cooking segments, interviews with state and national leaders, and much more. Thank you for joining us. First, we'll hear from Teo Gammons, who sat down with the director of Northern Tier High Adventure Base on the Minnesota-Ontario border to learn about their winter programs. This month, I sat down with Mr. Blake Ferry, who oversees expeditions out of Northern Tier High Adventure Base on the Minnesota-Ontario border. I learned many intriguing things about Northern Tier program. Mr. Ferry said that this time of year, they offer winter treks for scouts. While in the summer, they explore the boundary waters, hundreds of lakes by canoe, kayak, and more. In the winter months, they use dog sleds and skis. We offer kind of a wide array of winter activities. Um, we offer our, our main kind of program that we offer in the winter is called our Camping Weekend, uh, where scouts come up and they get to be outfitted with all the gear they need to be able to handle the cold we get here in Minnesota. And then they'll go out on an expedition or a trek uh, for two to three nights. Um, and they'll go out and they actually sleep out on the ice. Many groups that travel there in the winter spend time with the dogs. These dogs are retired race dogs that were brought over to the camp. Another interesting thing we talked about was the conditions. Mr. Ferry said that it is so silent that when you can wake up, all you hear is your own heartbeat. He also mentioned that it's a magical experience since there's no sounds, no movement, nothing at all, just a perfect sunrise and a perfect morning. There's like some magic to the winter up here. Uh, that you just can't experience any way else, anywhere else. Um, you know, the snow absorbs sound. So being able to stand out on a frozen lake, you can just hear nothing, like absolute silence. Maybe the wind, if it's a windy day, but just silence. And to be able to experience that is a pretty cool, magical feeling. You also can go cross-country skiing and various trails around the lakes. While doing overnight trips, the possibilities of sleeping over the ice on the lake are pretty high. Sounds kind of thrilling. After learning about Northern Tier and its magical experience, I personally want to go up there. Thank you, Teo. This month, the Pontiac Manitou District hosted a Klondike Derby competition, hosting troops from across the state. Anthony Goatley has the story. During the past weekend, over 250 scouts from all over southeastern Michigan came together to participate in HODAG, an annual event put on by the local Order of the Arrow chapter. During this event, scouts participate in events such as hot isotope carry, knot tying, and rope burn. What has been your favorite part of Hodag? Um, so far it's been the fire race and I'm uh, really looking forward to the sled races coming up soon. Um, we've been, we've been, from my point of view, we've been doing pretty good, but uh, there's some tough competition on here. It's going to come pretty close down in the end, I think. And what, is, what are you looking forward to today? Winning. <gasps> Wow, who's been your fiercest competition? 284, I believe. Right? Yeah, but uh, it's okay, we got them by a mile. 
Why do you why do you feel so confident about beating 284? Because I'm working with some of the best scouts I know. Let's be realistic here. We have been doing good in some and terrible in others. Right, Only two. We've been we we crushed it at the uh, bad. Uh, <laughs> Trivia was really bad. <laughs> we did not do well, that. We, we, we won two questions. games in a row on Tug of War. Right. And, and, and through and break, not breaking rights. Yeah. Um, so. yeah. The day finishes with a sled race where scouts build sleds and compete in a dog style sled race. At the end of the day, the patrol with the most points goes home with a traveling trophy and awards for best dad joke and most spirit were also given out. The day was perfect because it snowed in the afternoon, temperatures hovered around 14 degrees during the day, and dropped close to zero at night. According to the scouts, it was one of the best hoed eggs yet. We have a time! There's no one way to explore the world. My way is to push myself and never take the easy road. I prefer a road that winds through forests and goes up mountains because I've always been an adventurer at heart. That's why I can't wait to be a scout. Because scouting will guide me to great things. It won't just teach me to navigate the woods with confidence, but it'll give me the confidence to navigate the world. I'll enter the scouts as the best version of myself today and will grow into the best version of myself for my future. Scouting will show me how to use bravery, trustworthiness, loyalty, and kindness to become a person I'm proud to be. Because there's no one way to explore the world, and my way is in the scouts. So, so scout, scout me, me in. in. Next up, our gear guide, Jesse Quintana, has a review of a one-person backpacking tent. Welcome back to Jesse's gear review. Here we have a greenhorn tent, a one-person tent, which I've used for about two years now. So there are many interesting features about this particular tent. Um, there are added seams, specialized seams for uh, added weather protection. There's a little window here. It keeps you nice and warm because it's a one-person tent and it keeps in all your heat because it's just you in there. And it stays up by tensioning um, two stakes in the ground. Here we can't do that because we're on set. Um, it comes in at 2.79 pounds and it can e be easily strapped onto a backpack. So here I'll get inside of it just to show you. It's real easy. The zipper comes all the way down the side, so you can easily get inside of it. There it is. That's the tent. It's pretty comfortable inside, as long as you have a mat, because it doesn't come with one. hasn't ever given me a problem. Uh, I've had it for about two years, like I said, and I've used it on almost every camp out. It's a pretty good tent in total. If you were just hiking and you were exhausted, it's real easy to put up. It took us only about five minutes, and that's for anybody, and it might take even less time if you've done it more than once. This can be purchased for $39.99 at Joe's Army Navy. Um, that is a store in your Oakland County, Michigan. Um, yeah, it takes us in five minutes to put down. It is a nice one-person tent, and I hope you guys liked it. So now that I've showed you a couple things about it, I'm going to be taking it down. <laughs>
Here we go. Welcome to Scouting On Air. I am your host, Brooke Muzzy, and today I'm speaking with our VP of Operations for the East Division of MCC, Mrs. Sanker. So, Ms. Sanker, when you first joined Scouting, when was that, and what brought you to the program? I started scouting when my oldest son was in um, kindergarten, and he was actually was first grade exiting kindergarten. We didn't have tigers; it was only tigers back then. And um, wanted to, you know, his program, you know, what his dad did and his grandpa did, and uh, be able to do that. So he is in his 30s now, so it's <laughs> been a while. <laughs> awesome. What really like caused you to want to be part of it, and what kept you going in the program? Once I got involved and um, was leading um, the, the Cubs, it was a lot of fun just to see them grow, but what's made me stay around so much is when I got involved with the older scouts and watching them go from the little guys running around the room and just having fun to being able to run things, lead like yourself here doing mm -hmm. something like this. And um, there's just a lot of joy in watching young people grow. Awesome. When did you first join scouting and what brought you to the program? I joined scouting, oh, um, over 25 years ago uh, when my oldest was going into first grade. He was a Tiger Scout and it was something that his father and his grandfather had been involved in and so we wanted to continue the tradition and get him into the program. Um, I understand that you were previously the district chair for the Pine Man District, so uh, what were some of your recent successes? Uh, we have. Um, we have a great district and a lot of great volunteers. So we've done uh, quite a bit over the last uh, few years with um, advancements and uh, getting some great Eagle Scouts, including yourself, Brooke, here in the district. Um, we have um, increased our numbers and um, outreach to the, um, the community. Uh, we've held some great events. Uh, we just had uh, one this weekend and uh, we had one in the fall that allowed for our youth to get out and about despite some of the, the lockdown and shutdown issues that we've had. Um, we have um, this program starting. This is a big success as well. Um, we continue to uh, participate in uh, community events. We've done quite a bit of service. Uh, we had a unit here that had a number of Eagle Scouts that did a significant amount of service collectively, so quite a bit, um, you know, I could go on and on. <laughs> You've been involved with lots of programs like Wood Badge, National Youth Leadership Training, and the Order of the Arrow. Um, would you mind explaining your role in these programs to our viewers? Sure. Um, I've been less involved with Wood Badge, but Wood Badge is the advanced leader training for adults um, and it is a program that helps us understand how to run units and make sure that you know we live a life you know a day in the life um, I've only staffed that once and I was a quartermaster and that was a, a lot of fun to uh, and do that I spent most of my time with the uh, NYLT the National Youth Leader Training and I've had uh, various roles there um, and that is the uh, highest for the youth. It's very similar to Wood Badge. And I, I know you know some of this. Yes. You've been an attendee. Um, they, uh, and in there, as you know, you learn a lot about how to run it as a youth uh, since the organization is youth run and adult advised or you know, supported. And uh, what I really enjoy about that is you know, the youth run that program, not the adults, and we're just there to support, make sure they stay safe, and that they educate the new participants, and we continue to grow the leadership in the organization. Wow, that's phenomenal. Um, so what is something that you're most proud of from scouting? Hmm. It's an interesting question, um, because it's hard to choose. Um, two things come to mind. Um, one is, you know, my own boys. I've had four boys go through the program, and uh, the last two were uh, very involved and involved in uh, the Order of the Arrow, the National um, Honor Society of Scouting. And they, um, I watched them when they were still, you know, 16. They could stand up in front of a crowd of a thousand and just lead a crowd and 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 get them excited and do things. And and so to me, that's heartwarming from a personal perspective. But the other one that I have is um, I advised one youth over the course of four years 
through different you know positions. And um, when I started with him, I was you know that adult going, "Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that." By year four. He was reminding me, don't forget <laughs> to do this, don't forget to do that. And it was very exciting for me when he got his eagle. In fact, this is his uh, mentor pin that I wear because I'm very proud of what he's done and um, to the point where I feel like he's another one of my boys. That's, that's something that is very good to be proud of. Um, what is your vision for scouting in the next five years in our uh, council? What I would like to see us do is um, continue to grow and come back from um, this COVID situation where yes. people you know, decided to disengage and um, be able to re-engage people, bring them outdoors in that outdoor experience. We just had a wonderfully positive event this past weekend where we had over 250 people come. Um, I wanna start getting that again and uh, the excitement and the growth and have all the districts be able to experience that growth and that comeback and because you know what we're doing is we're helping the leaders of tomorrow. You're a leader of tomorrow, and I really want to see you guys excel and do well. Because you know that's the country I'm living in. I want you guys to be there for us. Awesome. Thank you for answering all of my questions, Jen. You're quite welcome. We'll be back with more scouting on air. My name is Brooke Mazzi, and this is Jennifer Sanker. My name is Corey Lindsay. I'm the Explorer Commander for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Explorer Post. Well, I first heard about the Explorer Program because I went to Veterans Tribute. It's a local high school here that's specifically geared towards law enforcement and emergency medical services. And so there I took law enforcement classes and I heard about the Explorer Program through there. Our teacher is actually a former Metro dispatcher, so she makes sure we're really well trained to be specifically geared towards Metro. And that's how I really fell in love with dispatching was just like her enthusiasm and then also like being in involved with explorers and being a dispatch explorer. I've been working towards this goal for five years and I can't imagine doing anything else. I was pretty lucky. For the last five years, I've known that I've always wanted a career in law enforcement and exploring has just kind of helped me fine tune that goal. I think being an explorer, it just makes you a better person overall. Um, you learn how to interact with different people from all different walks of life. Our program, there's over 200 of us, so there's it's incredibly diverse. And especially too with being in law enforcement, you have to know how to talk to people and how to engage with people. It's definitely like brought me out of my shell, especially too because all of my friends that I hang out with on a regular basis are all explorers. I see them multiple times throughout the week. We hang out even when we're not at Explorers. We'll spend hours together. And before that, I was a hermit. Like I just went to school, went home and just did my thing. But now because of Explorers, it's definitely made me be more open to people. And it just makes you a better person and a better leader. The Exploring program, particularly for Metro, has helped the department because it has made the department more accessible to the community. And people come up to us, they talk to us, they ask us questions. I myself am a recruiter, so I go to different high schools and middle schools and different career fairs to try to engage with other youth in the Valley to try to get them to come to our program. Particularly with our police department, I think they're great supporters of our program. The majority of our advisors were explorers themselves, and so it's more of like they're giving back. Police departments that don't have exploring posts, they should definitely start one because it helps create a great source of future employees and it helps with strengthening relations with the youth of your community. Exploring, discover your future. At this time, Scouting On Air would like to recognize recent Eagle projects completed for the benefit of our local communities. Jeffrey Ellingsworth of Troop 185B built a new playhouse for the children of Grace Centers of Hope in Pontiac, providing a safe recreational area for the children who live there. Theo Krentz of Troop 284 planted 20 white pine trees at St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church in Troy. Grant said he chose the service project with the church after earning the Alpha Omega Award, a religious emblem offered by the Orthodox Church in partnership with the Boy Scouts of America. Casey Houlihan of Troop 128 cleared a parking area at Orion Township's Camp Agawam. Houlihan said he hopes the new lot will allow Orion residents 
to use the space more frequently. Finally, our own Brooke Muzzy completed her Eagle project also at Camp Agawam. Muzzy cleared a trail removing harmful invasive species and installed two new benches for the public to use. Thank you to all our Eagle Scouts and prospective Eagle Scouts. Thank you for watching this month's episode of Scouting on Air. This has been yours in Scouting, Brooke Muzzy. We'll see you next month. Now that you've said it, though, <laughs> now, now you have to come again. through. Now you have to come. Well, if it comes to April and I'm not interviewing Mike Rowe, I'm going to be a little disappointed. Well, the mayor.